It's finally here, the Prusa MK4, the long-awaited successor to the MK3 platform. I'm really excited, but I'm not getting one. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and it's finally here, the Prusa MK4. It has been over five years since the announcement of the MK3, and it's time for an upgrade. Going to not just 32-bit, we have the entire next router from the XL platform being really shoved into the MK3 line, and so many more features, including input shaping. And if you want to look at fast 3D printing, input shaping is pretty much the only way to do it without losing quality. And if you're used to the products like the Bamboo Lab X1, X1 Carbon, and P1P, as well as Vorons and the BQ Huracan, as well as the FL Sun V400, among others, well, you've seen Input Shaper before. But something's a little bit different about the MK4. It's a lot quieter, and it seems to go pretty hard in the paint, just as hard as our sponsor, Diamondback nozzles. Thanks again to Diamondback Nozzles for supporting 3D Musketeers. We absolutely love their products and have been using them for over six months now on quite a few of our production 3D printers, running over 15 kilograms of carbon fiber material through without any noticeable wear whatsoever. And yes, as the name states, these nozzles are tipped in pure diamond. You can even take a diamond tester freaking works. Instead of the normal process where you're raising your temperatures for a nozzle that can do abrasive materials, you are going to lower your temperatures for the diamond back because diamonds are considerably more thermally conductive than even the yellow brass nozzles that you have on your printers now. Made in the USA, carrying a warranty from the factory, and having the ability to print everything from your regular PLA all the way up through metal filaments, you are able to use one nozzle for the rest of the life of your printer. Buy one, heck, buy a couple, and mess around with different sizes. They have nozzles available for your Volcano applications, MK8, as well as V6 applications, which you'll see is possible to put on your MK4. And when we get an MK4 in, you can absolutely bet that we're gonna be putting a Diamondback nozzle on it because a Diamondback is the last nozzle that you will ever need. Again, thank you to Diamondback for sponsoring our video. We have some product links in that description where you can take a look at Diamondback nozzles. Save a couple of bucks by using our link and code. Hope you guys will like these nozzles as much as I do. Let me know your thoughts about them down in those comments, but let's get back to talking about the MK4. This printer is same, same, but different, but really not the same. Same. There are so many things that are new about it, but it looks incredibly similar to what you would expect. The big thing being, no longer are we using 8-bit. Thankfully, we are moving away from 8-bit, and we knew this was coming. The Mini has been using 32-bit for years and has effectively been the test platform for what you now see as the Mark IV. In fact, it runs a modified version of that Buddy firmware on it to basically handle everything that you see. So a lot of the firmware updates and changes that you see are now more common across their printers rather than being incredibly segmented versus 8-bit and 32-bit. So when it comes to doing updates, I think we might see some more of them coming fast. And yes, don't worry, there is an upgrade path for those of us with the MK3 that would like to get either somewhat of the way there, most of the way there, or all the way there. Stay tuned, we're gonna be talking about it later on. But this first paragraph really tells us everything we need to know about it. It's built around our new 32-bit connected architecture. It has a next generation extruder, the next extruder. It lays down a perfectly smooth first layer every time without live adjust C, and it has supports for higher speed printing with input shaper and pressure advance. They've also improved safety features even further, plus a ton of new things such as quick swap nozzles, built-in support for remote printing and webcams, and many, many, more and it's still beautifully quiet and the best thing they already have a couple hundred units in stock and they're shipping right away now that has obviously changed those couple hundred units are gone and it is a couple of weeks to get a machine but we are already seeing machines out in the wild which is amazing and for those of you that are like why don't you just put clipper on the darn thing they built their entire own stm32 bare metal and they've got a launch video so let's check it out oh this thing is so beautiful I mean, it looks the same, but I've always loved the look of the MK3 platform. The LED status bar on the bottom, let's go. A lot of changes made. Of course, that next extruder, you have to have that next extruder with that cycloidal gearbox, 
Although personally, I would like to have a clear cover on that. And I hope somebody makes a clear cover because I want to see those gears. I know I'm not the only one that wants to see those gears. Don't cover it up with a black cover. I want a clear cover. Joe Mikolas, somebody make that happen. I will pay extra for a clear cover. I want to see those gears. It is really cool to me to see the gears. I'm sorry, I'm a geek, and I know the rest of you are too. Leave a like if you want to see those gears. And look at the bearings! Sealed ball bearings everywhere! Of course, that first layer calibration with the load cell. Really, really great way to do it. I'm so excited for a perfect first layer. You have no idea. And the fan just pivoting away. So easy to change out nozzles. Love it. Two little bolts, slide the new unit in, and you're done. And of course, the aftermarket adapter, so you can put whatever V6 nozzles you want, including the diamonds. Same basic sensor for your filament runout, but this breakout board is nice. I recently saw these utilized more on kind of budget printers, like the Sobel SV06, where it runs one cable in, and then it does the breakout on the machine itself. It certainly makes management a lot easier. Things like replacing heaters and thermistors. You don't gotta undo that whole freaking cable wrap and all that crap. You just have to plug it into the new connection right there. I think that really simplifies things and makes it a little bit easier. But it does complicate some things because that's more technology that has to be produced. And Prusa has been vertically integrating. We'll see that in a little bit. Love the large contact area, but it is only single-sided, which is interesting. Gotta love the 32-bit. So as we can see, we've got an accelerometer, we've got Ethernet, and we've got Wi-Fi. Note on the Wi-Fi, that is a daughter board. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. ARM CPU, all built in-house, and USB-C. Gotta love USB-C color screen love seeing input shaping and the quality looks great Prusa connect of course to make it easy to take care of your machines offline ready shots fired right Prusa knew what they were doing here you can run your mk4 and mk3 for that matter or any Prusa printer completely offline you're not required to connect it to the internet to update the software I'm not salty about having to do that at all. And I'm glad to see that that is a new availability because with the advent of Wi-Fi and Ethernet on printers, it is kind of an issue when you start to deal with data security. And those of you that are looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? When you start looking at business and government, things like data security with NDAs and even as far up as ITAR linked to some of that in the description, you really have to care about who and what has access to your files and being able to completely disable any internet connection to your printer and not lose any of the features that it comes with is amazing to have. Love the extra safety features, the one-click printing and reprint shortcuts, RGB makes it faster. Obviously, the RGB makes it faster. And this extremely quiet printing. Prusa put out a video. We'll watch a little bit of it because it's 20 minutes for their Benchy. I did not believe it until I heard some videos of my own. Of course, you can pretty much print with whatever material you want. And they're using no VFA motors. The MK3 uses standard 1.8 degree steppers on the X and Y axes, which can result in some of these VFA that you see. I believe it's vertical fine artifacts going to 0.9 degree steppers. So that is double the resolution, basically removes that problem, giving you a better quality print. Of course, the magnetic print sheet, as we all know and love, and it's the same size, so you can still use your old ones. And because of that perfect first layer, you just change out the sheet. You don't need to change anything else. It just works. And because of this new auto probing system where the nozzle is now your probe, they only really have to mesh in the print area, which saves you time. Not a ton of time, but still it's going to save you seconds. And if you are really concerned about speed, there you go. Only level where you need it. Love the automatic filament loading. Liable and safe, of course. Prusas are some of the most safe printers on the market right now. And over 1 million test hours made in Prague. Oh, yeah. 
MMU3. Let's go. New multi-material upgrade unit for the Prusa MK4 with up to five colors and an easy upgrade path from your MMU2 that'll work on basically any of the Prusa printers out there. And given the unreliability of the MMU2 for some people, seeing better reliability for the MMU3, really happy to see it. There you go, the intro video. Let's talk about it, because there's a lot to go through. I did not know how many Prusas existed in the world, but apparently it is over 350,000 machines. In five years, that's pretty good. And changing over 90% of the parts from the MK3 means a lot of things needed to change, starting with their die cast frame. The MK3 was more of a milled and cut system, and now they're doing a two-part injection mold that is then sandblasted and powder coated. It's pretty cool, and it enables them to pump out the frames not only faster, but more affordably. And when you are dealing with injection molding, Things change a little bit. For those of you that don't know, injection molding is a much different world than 3D printing, and it is not just an instant go-to. There's some extra steps, and Prusa is doing all of this in-house. As we'll see, they have vertically integrated this entire process. They have struggled with supply chain issues because they're not willing to cut corners to get printers out to customers that will need considerable hardware changes after delivery. They really want to make this thing work right out of the gate, and it looks like they might have actually done it with the MK4. Prusa has been kind of plagued with rough starts with their machines. The Mini, the MK3, and even the SL1 were all plagued with similar problems, but it looks like this MK4 is turning out to be some of the best plug and play experiences that customers that are getting their machines already, literally less than a week after the thing is announced, they got printers in their laps. That is amazing to see. And they're having great experiences. And as we can see, the development of the XL and the MK4 ran in parallel, but Prusa was pretty quiet about the MK4, right? For years now, they've been working on it but nobody's really talked about it because it's always been XL, XL, XL. And a lot of us were just quietly enjoying our MK3s because guess what? They work! And there's nothing that we have to do to really worry about them. Now the MK4 kind of changes it. And because Prusa understands that people like me and other small businesses are not really looking to connect their printers to the internet if they can avoid it, they allow you to completely air gap the MK4. So while you don't get the fun benefits of using softwares like Prusa Connect, you are able to really enjoy the entire printer without losing any of the core features that are offered. It's pretty good. And while the build volume remains mostly the same, you do get an extra 10 millimeters of Z, and you know, hey, an extra 10 mil goes a long way as far as I'm concerned, but does it come with an extra 10 millimeter socket? Cause I can't find any of mine. Do you know where I put my 10 mil sockets, Victoria? Stoic. Absolutely stoic. And because of this Nextruder, as well as their integrated load cells into this extruder platform, they can detect pressure in the nozzle itself and adjust the first layer so it is perfect. No more having to remember which profile that you have set for each build plate or renaming it. You just put on the new build plate, click print, and everything auto adjusts to give you that perfect glass-like first layer. So those of you that enjoy your first layer, beautiful pictures that you can post online, well, this is just easy mode. It's not even that difficult anymore. And I kind of like that. Mind you, we don't change out the beds very often. We just kind of use the same bed over and over. So I am kind of used to just getting great looking first layers, but getting an entire build plate to be a piece of glass as a first layer is not as easy as you may think. And with this new Nextruder design, Prusa pretty much is guaranteeing it. With the advent of a new platform comes a new extruder and it is co-designed and engineered with the team over at E3D. So, you know what's gonna be good, but it 
does move away from the V6 platform. And those of us that have invested heavily into the V6 platform, I am a little bummed about this, but they are offering a V6 conversion kit, which will allow you to use your V6 nozzles on this machine. So anyone that does have dozens of V6 nozzles like we do, you're not gonna have to go out and invest into a new platform. Although I don't yet see silicone socks available and I still don't know why Prusa doesn't include them. I really do believe it is a valuable piece of kit to have and a great cheap insurance policy for hot ends. On the bright side though, two thumb screws, you can drop the entire hot end out and replace it very, very quickly. Now, if you are going to use a V6 nozzle, you can still hot swap the whole thing, or I guess, cold swap the whole thing. But if you want to change your nozzles, you will still need to do that at temperature requiring two tools. It is not a single handed operation, unfortunately. And for those of us that do handle a lot of nozzle swaps or a lot of changes when it comes to messing around, like if you've enjoyed the Revo platform, you might really enjoy this because you're still able to enjoy the flexibility of swapping your nozzle and at the same time also swapping your hot end. I have not yet seen the price on the entire hot end assembly. And if it is out before this video goes live, we'll make sure to give you guys an update on the screen. And goodbye to those old segmented LCD displays from yesteryear. We have a graphic LCD screen, very similar to what you would find on the mini. But this one also comes with some Erga bleds, as my buddy Zach Friedman would say. We've got RGB customizable status indicating LEDs on the machine itself. So at a glance, you can quickly know where your printers are at within their print cycle, whether they're heating up, cooling down, mid print, need your help or something like that. We also now have a USB port right on the side of the LCD as well. And this is a proper USB A port to allow you to plug in whatever you want, including a standard flash drive, or if you're old school, throw a card reader in there with an SD card. But to be clear, a standard thumb drive is still pretty cheap and really, really easy to use, and they last longer than SD cards, in my opinion. Of course, the more robust motors, precise 0.9 step motors with low inductance to help eliminate the vertical fine artifacts so the prints look even better, and now 10 millimeter rods on the z-axis giving your z-axis a bit more stiffness on it i know normally they're using eight millimeter everywhere it is nice to see the thicker 10 millimeter though because that will result in less flex during the print of course we have the mmu3 and i have kind of avoided the MMU from Prusa. I know people that have had terrible experiences and then people that have had amazing experiences. And I'm really not one to sit there and fiddle and futz with a printer accessory like that when realistically the bulk of the work that we do does not require any multicolor 3D printing. I'm more interested in tool changing aspects, which will result in less waste, but still give us color options or more specifically material options should we be looking for it. And the MMU is that answer on the MK4 and if you wanted MK3 line as well. And the upgrade is really cheap. It's a $90 upgrade from the two to the three. So if you have an MMU2 that you're not using all that much, that $90 upgrade might be able to breathe more life back into it. So take a look at that. Links, of course, to all of that in the description down below. Prusa is vertically integrating and vertical integration means that they do their best to control every aspect of the supply chain possible so that there aren't any supply chain issues and that if there are issues in production, they can get found and solved considerably faster than traditional manufacturing. Everything up to and including X-ray CT scanning of the chips to make sure that all the wires and vias are correctly placed and milled where necessary. And honestly, that's just cool looking. And yes, the fully assembled printers are shipping now. And the price is, as far as I can tell, completely unchanged from the MK3S line. And now the MK3S is considerably less money. So if you are trying to get a Prusa printer and you're trying to get in a little bit cheaper, the MK3S Plus is now down to about 650. And they've got assembled MK4s in stock not anymore, of course, but at the re release of this, they had some in stock at basically 1100 US dollars, which is a little expensive. Even the kit at $800 is going to be expensive. When we look at the landscape of 3D printing, things have changed. 
we're going to get to my thoughts toward the end of the video, but this is something that I'm definitely going to get stuck on. And I want you guys to understand a little bit about it. So we will get into more detail toward the end. And for those that want to play with the next router now, you can go ahead and cancel your XL order and convert it to a regular MK4. And it's actually going to replace your XL order with an MK4 and your order will go to the front of the queue. And for those of us that have quite a few MK3s, there are upgrade paths available. The MK3S Plus to the MK3.5, which is 250 US dollars, which contains the new board, the LCD, which will give the MK3 the 32-bit electronic option that a lot of us are looking for, as well as the ability for input shaper and pressure advance for high-speed printing. However, the next router is not included. But interestingly, neither is an accelerometer. To do input shaping, you need an accelerometer. So my guess is that Prusa is going to provide pre-done input shaping profiles for the MK3 line in a future firmware push for those that only chose to do the MK3 to the 3.5. You can, for 500, double the price, go to the 3.9 upgrade kit, which includes everything from the MK4 except the XYZ motors, the extruder motor is included. You'll reuse the frame, power supply, and motors from the MK3S. And if you want, you can additionally buy the new precise MK4 motors and thus complete the full build and upgrade to the MK4. For only $90 more, you get the entire upgrade, which includes the stepper motors as well. Now, I'm not certain if it will also give you the new frame because it still looks like you're reusing the frame. So you will lose out on that extra 10 millimeters of build volume, but I don't see it as that big of a deal. Something pointed out in Prusa Live, which we will link to in that description down below, is that the MK3 Hanen stood way off of the rails, which gave it quite a bit of cantilever force. The next router brings everything much closer. I believe Joe described it as about one thumb digit closer, which is about 24 millimeters or about an inch. Pretty amazing. Looking at this new 32-bit buddy board with the daughter board, big big difference. The Rambo boards used in the MK3 one, not only being old, are nowhere near as heavily populated as you see here. We've got some stepper motor drivers all over the board. We've got our nice big ARM processor that is bare metal built inside of Prusa Research, as well as all the connectors, replaceable fuses, and connections that you would expect from a Prusa printer. Going out to the breakout board, new connectors that are not common that we have here laying around. So it will be interesting to see what we will need to buy to make our own. I find that often it is easier for us to maintain an inventory of raw parts and then produce our own end use connectors than it is to have every little individual piece for every little individual printer in stock. So I'll be curious to see what happens with the MK4 platform and those specific connectors. But being open source means the connectors should be available. Even if they are custom, we should still be able to buy them. So let's take a look at what the new buddy board is capable of monitoring. Dual voltage measuring, high current measurement, hardware based protection, which disconnects the hot end heater if the current goes over 2.8 amps, total input current measurement for the 24 volt branch, hardware over current protection and safety function that disconnects the heater and power bed supply when the total current exceeds 15 amps, which is pretty amazing, but good Lord, 15 amps. Whoa, that's a spicy meatball. Power panic, of course, if you do lose power for some reason, as well as your four thermistors, your hot end, your heat break, Ah, uh, heat bed and ambient. Having a heat break thermistor in means that you're able to track if you are getting close to some sort of heat creep scenario and it could warn you to adjust temperatures as needed. Now, I haven't seen much talk about that, but I know it's in there as a method to control your not only flow rate, but also how much heat is applied and where. Because again, you don't want to get too much heat into your heat break because you'll get heat creep causing your filament to jam up, ruining your 3D print. And they're using the TMC 2130 LA drivers, fully equipped with many different ports, including ESP01 Wi-Fi board, and the Wi-Fi module is included, 
but optional. Love that. Ethernet port, service, USB-C port. So I wonder if that is where you do your firmware upgrades. I don't know. You get your I squared C port for all the fun inputs and outputs that you might be looking for. Accelerometer port, which is unpopulated, the Multimaterial 3 upgrade port, and the next router port, which is only a single cable, so it makes it a lot easier to do the wiring should you decide on getting the kit. One of the more important features with this next router is the large aluminum heat sinks, which doubles as the body of the next router, with two thumb screws that you can quickly release the entire hot and assembly from the side of the printer by just folding out the fan. Now, interestingly, they chose to put the fan on the side of the printer. They do have a duct that does appear to give you reasonably decent cooling, but I am really curious as to Prusa's movement away from the 5015 blower fan and into the 3010. And because the next router is all metal, no PTFE at all. On the Mark 3S, you do have a small piece of PTFE, but it doesn't go into the hot zone. So it is still an all metal hot end, but over time that PTFE does wear out and does need to be changed. We keep spares in stock, but going to a full metal, no BS solution, gosh, would be so great. I'm very excited. And of course, the next router V6 adapter, which lets you use any V6 compatible nozzles, including hardened and high flow. Yes, CHT lovers out there, you're good to go. But of course, Prusa will be offering a variety of nozzles from 0.25 to 0.8 in their eShop with more models coming later. I'm curious to what those more models are. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Of course, we got that 10 to 1 planetary gearbox, which I've come to really enjoy with the Solval SV06, which we recently unboxed and tested. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. I liked it. They're good printers and they run well, but this 35 millimeter no slip drive gear really intrigues me. It does appear that they're only gripping the filament on one side, which is an interesting thing for them to do because traditionally MK3 platform used very small bond tech gears, but it was a dual drive. So we rarely had an instance where we stripped out filament. It was more common for us to actually have the extruder motor start to skip rather than us start ripping through filament. So I'm curious to see if we have similar experiences with the MK4's large 35 millimeter no slip drive gear, or if there's going to be something else. But when you do run such a deep reduction, a 10 to one reduction, you're going to get a ton of torque out of that system to what I would assume is push through most any clog that you have. And with this load cell, you are enabling effectively glass like first layers. And you know, while I am a little how you doing about the fan on the side, boy, it lets you see that hot end nice and clear. Love the look of that. I do like that new style block, but I'm nostalgic for the V6 block. They, they're still nice and they, they still live in my heart. I still love you, V6. Something that I do love to see. This is the injection molded frame that we have for the machine itself. We can see this is a date code. This date code is from... 2022. These things have been in production for a while and at least in beta for quite some time as well. I really wish that all of these really nice little features and everything were on the front where we could see them. But I recognize that a lot of people do enjoy the more monolithic aspect to the Prusa itself and don't really want all this hexagonal garbage, if you will, there. But this adds a lot of stiffening. You will see this in injection molding because because it reduces the amount of material needed while still providing at least 90% of the strength that would be there if the part was dead solid. This not only removes weight when it comes to assembly and sprung weight, but also shipping. Don't forget, these things are made 100% in the Czech Republic. None of this, we don't know where it's made somewhere in China BS. It's made with real people making livable wages in the Czech Republic which is an amazing thing to see and absolutely contributes to the $800 minimum price point for the kit. Input shaping. Yeah, input shaping is something that a lot of people have talked about. And if you like input shaping and you don't know about my buddy Nero3D, go check out his channel. We recently hung out with him on his shop talk series. We'll card to that episode where Nero and I just kind of hung out, talk shop, and uh, his viewers got to learn a little bit more about the professional side of 3D Musketeers and the work that we do behind the scenes that you guys don't always necessarily get to come along for. Input shaping changes the game. What it is effectively is optical image stabilization or what a lot of us are more commonly 
aware of active noise canceling for your printer. Because what it does is during vibrations, it can actually counteract those vibrations with small movements of its own to keep the machine able to run incredibly fast acceleration times, but have staggeringly little ghosting on the part itself. And as you can see, they've rewritten nearly everything and it is almost the same as Clipper, but because they're using their own bare metal STM32 boards, they kind of have to rewrite it themselves. And it is one of the best ways to eliminate that level of ghosting and artifacting on prints. And we can see the MK3 would take 10 hours to make these parts and 3.5 hours on the MK4 in draft mode. Now, I don't know what that means in terms of your layer heights. This one does appear to be somewhere in the 0 0.25, 0 0.28, maybe even 0.3, where this does appear to be 0.2, but that is a big time savings for sure. And while the MK4 doesn't have a built-in accelerometer, there is an accelerometer port on the buddy board and they use it to calibrate input shaping and then you can use the pre-calibrated firmware without an accelerometer attached. I'll be curious to see if they do end up offering an accelerometer add-in for your tool head or just something that you can add in there to do proper tuning of the accelerometer because different shelving alignments, different types of tables, all of that should affect the overall resonance of the machine. And I know this because every one of the Mark III's behind me, we had to turn off their crash detection because if we run more than two of them at a time, they can resonate to where they believe they have crashed and they will try to rehome themselves. And if any of you have dealt with that feature on the Mark III, it is not the most reliable thing on the planet. And we just had to completely turn it off. So I would love the ability to add an accelerometer, even if temporarily, to set my own custom input shaping numbers so that as a farm aspect, we don't have that problem. But I have a feeling that Prusa is going to get it pretty darn close from the factory. And then those mad lads that do like to mess around will provide us with new ones that guys like me that don't really feel like messing around all the time. Although now at the channel, maybe we would, you know, the cheat codes to make it happen the first time, every time. And while Prusa is aware of the speedboat race, they're not going to win it. They know they're not going to win it, but we've got a sub 20 minute Benchy. Take a listen. This is apparently not adjusted for sound according to Mikolas and about a 46 dB noise. I'm going to fast forward. It's really quiet. To give you guys an idea, the only other input shaping machine that I've experienced with is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And while I'm having a better experience with the second machine, kind of, it is so freaking loud. I cannot run it when we film because it is so loud. Some of its movements get picked up by my microphone. Now it is able to move and print at 300 millimeters a second. And while a bed slinger is likely not going to hit that level, if we are one tenth of the noise of the bamboo and we're 80% of the speed, that's a win as far as I'm concerned. For those of us that want to run farms of printers or have more than one or have one in the house they live in and not have to sequester it to a garage or a basement, having quiet machines is important, especially when you look at the spousal approval factor for these types of machinery because uh, 3D printers are not cheap always and they tend to not have the best spousal approval factor. And if they're quiet, that is one step closer to, I bought a new 3D printer, honey. And rather than them serving you with divorce papers, they serve you with your entire set of hex keys and help you build the printer together. But as you can see, the Benchy in that video was printed with a default acceleration of 8,000 millimeters per second squared and 200 millimeters second on the external perimeters, which is very fast. Looking at the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon bone stock speeds, we can see 200 millimeter outer wall, 300 inner, sparse and fill 270, internal solid fill at 250, and the top surface is 200. So these speeds are pretty close, but the accelerations, well, the bamboo's got it. 10,000 millimeters per second squared on the normal printing top surface of 2,000, outer wall of 5,000, and first layer of 500. So while the bamboo does accelerate faster and will likely end up printing faster, it is so incredibly loud. Noise equals friction, which equals wear. I think this printer is gonna 
last longer? I'll be curious to find out. But as we can see, it is a work in progress, so these are not final numbers. But a sub 20 minute benchy is nothing to shake a stick at. The last time I did a sub 20 minute benchy, it was with a 1.8 millimeter CHT, and it looked like it was made of toothpaste because I was printing 1.5 millimeter thick layers, I think, to get that kind of speed. So, you know, a little bit different. But as we can see, the MK3 at 81 minutes and the MK4 at 20 minutes. We do have a little bit of an artifact here on the door to the Benchy. And I like that Prusa didn't just give us, you know, a perfect sample or even more specifically, potentially lie about what we're seeing. We can still see a little bit of an artifact at the flat bed level line of the Benchy. This is something that's unique to Prusa Slicer. I don't know what causes it, but we definitely have a line there. We've got a little bit of a line on the portholes here on the Benchy as well. But I mean, that's a damn good Benchy for 20 minutes. That's a good Benchy for 81. This is a much better Benchy for 20. So of course, with the software, we get a very similar menu system to the Mini with new options and possibility to customize the UI. You could have up to five different values in the footer on the main screen, such as temperature, fan speed, and print speed. I dig that because you might have a certain way that you want things to be. And if that makes it a little bit easier for you or your staff, assuming you're looking at this from a business perspective, time is money. With the MK4, they are releasing Prusa Slicer 2.5.2, which has factory tested profiles for the MK4. So if you want to check your print times, update Prusa Slicer 2.5 to 2.5.2, and you'll be able to see not only the MK4, but the XL profiles as well were released in 2.5.2. Dot one, so you're able to take a look at it. And yes, of course, 2.6 is on the way. Alpha 6 was just released, and we've been messing around with it, and I really, really do enjoy it. It's awesome to see more features coming into Prusa Slicer, and of course, a full 2.6 video when it comes out officially will happen here, don't you worry. And the connectivity issues, something that is a bit of a sore spot for me. All of our printers here, except for one, are completely air gappable, with the bamboo being the one printer that we kind of have to leave on the network. If you take a bamboo printer off of your network completely, like disconnect it from your network, you can't update it anymore. Prusa is not only fully enabling you to still update your machines, you can remove your Wi-Fi module and then plug up your Ethernet module, completely air gapping your 3D printer, giving you the utmost level of security. So if you are in government or DOD level work, well, you're set. You now also can play with Prusa Connect. You get your own dashboard with a complete overview of the machine. You can drag and drop G codes into the browser window and upload print files first into the cloud. Each user gets one gig for free. Not a ton of space, but it's generally more than adequate for most machines. Then you can transfer the print file onto the printer's USB storage and start the print remotely. All communications between the printer and Prusa Connect is encrypted with an EU-based server structure in Frankfurt, Germany. And if you know anything about the European Union's desire for data privacy, you'll know I feel a lot more comfortable with that than, frankly, I do with servers in the United States at this point. But if you are a government agency, that is not going to work for you as far as I'm aware. So air gapping is the way to go and still use USB sticks, just like the way we've been used to, just not SD cards, USB sticks. And you get nice cool telemetry on the machine itself, including things like print fan speed, bed temperatures, nozzle temperatures, and your extruder fan speed. Gives you, you know, all the little metrics that you might need to see, as well as remaining time, when it will be completed, and how far it is. Really nice UI. Definitely can't hate that. MMU3, of course, as well. We'll do an entire video on that, assuming you guys do want to see MMU content on this channel. I'm a little hesitant because I honestly, multi material kind of scares me. I, mixing is always one of those weird things that if you don't get it perfectly right, you end up having bleed of either colors or materials, and things just don't always work perfectly. But if you want to see it, let me know in those comments, and we'll see about getting an MMU unit as well. And unlike the bamboo. There is no poop. It uses a wipe tower, which while it does take up space on the build plate, it doesn't just shoot out random bits of filament out the back of the machine. And yeah, again, shots fired, of course, from Prusa. What were you guys expecting here? Of course, they were going to do some firing of said shots, but I do believe it is important for us to really 
take a look at not only the waste, but how we deal with the waste from MMU printers. And we can see in the eShop that the MK4 kit is not yet available. As I said in the intro, I'm not yet getting an MK4. As much as I would love to have one, I really want the kit. I want to enjoy the building experience of these machines. And we don't necessarily need another 3D printer right now. I know, blasphemy. If we can get a review unit, awesome. I don't know where I can apply for that, but hey, Joe, if you're watching this, uh, that'd be really sweet. Would love a kit because I want to do a stream of building the MK4. It just sounds like a lot of fun. I think you guys would enjoy it. I know I will enjoy it because it is going to happen at some point. And at 800 bucks plus the regular shipping that you're used to, you're getting this all in for under 900 bucks US and you can't beat that. Looking at the upgrades, they are looking to ship sometime in June. So if you're looking to upgrade your MK3 printers now, ain't happening chief you're waiting until june that's all right it is what it is and 90 bucks to upgrade the mmu 2s to the mmu 3. now we're looking at a lead time of between six and eight weeks on the mk4 i would guess quite a few thousand of them were already ordered but my buddy trevor from tg creative already has his in hand take a look we got some better photos from this it is a delta fan we can see that it's a delta fan i do like that it's a delta fan but i, I don't know i'm on the fence about it love that little gold silver i'm assuming that's oh my gold or maybe it's viva la bronze double springs on the extruder which is interesting because of course on the mk3 we went down to a single from the double on the mk2 so i don't know why they went back to double we've got a completely redesigned hot end with a now vertical heater always interesting and the fan blowing on what is effectively about a quarter of the nozzle itself a newly redesigned spool holder although it looks like it's the same old spool holder with a filament guide i would guess this is to enable better filament pathing and it looks like there might be some ptfe in there as well really really pretty pictures thank you again trevor for these i dig it it looks really nice we can see some better shots of this buddy board as well as these further breakout areas these look like relatively standard connections but they are all locking which is really convenient convenient from the it's never going to wiggle away and really inconvenient from the I would like to you know fix it more photos of some test prints we do see more issues with the cooling on one side than the other and I'm wondering if that has to do with the current fan shroud but the nice thing is if there is room to grow on the fan shroud the community will be the one to show it he did also post a short video showing what the first print looks like and for those of you that are used to the mk3s this one's gonna be a little bit weird for you it's doing the purge in the middle of the bed because it does the purge right by the part itself no more skirt around the part it's not necessary it goes right from that little nozzle prime into printing the first layer of your part and again there's no first layer calibration needed it just looks beautiful tldr i'm really excited but i want a kit i really want a kit i want that building experience i want to see what it's like and with how good every one of my mk3s plus building kits have been i'm excited for the mk4 and the gummy bears come on that's half the fun of the kit but i do think the entire ecosystem of 3d printing has changed since the mk3s and 800 bucks as a kit or 1100 assembled is a very high price in today's market with machines like the bamboo lab p1p which eh, i guess we can compare those there's yeah, I mean, there's really no reason we shouldn't be. They're considered, you know, entry level slash prosumer or the X1 Carbon, which is roughly the same price without the AMS. You've got a lot of different offerings from companies out there. But if we ignore Bamboo for a minute, we look at some of the more affordable options that have come from China with the Sovel SV06 and looming the SV06 Plus. I have shipping confirmation of mine, so hopefully it comes in relatively soon. But I think the industry has changed a little bit. Does that mean I'm going to stop recommending Prusa, remove all the machines behind me, start wearing tinfoil hats in videos, and telling Prusa we need to have a talk? No, we, we don't. I think Prusa's really refining what their target market looks like, and there will be plenty of consumers that buy these machines. Why? Because we want the reliability, we want the 24 seven customer support, we want the warranty, we want well-paid workers, commitment to open source, 
and further upgrade ability for whatever comes after the MK4. But at $800 as a kit, there are a lot of other options out there that are cheaper. I believe if you're looking to build out a print farm, you can't go wrong with the MK4, but you're gonna get a lot fewer printers if you were to buy MK4s than you would if you bought something else. Now, does that mean you shouldn't go get MK4s? No, I would get some. I am going to get some and I don't need any. I want to start replacing some of our MK3Ss with MK4s. Now, I'm not gonna get rid of them, I'm just gonna move them to different areas in the shop because, well, well, I want to see the MK4 front and center. I do dig them, and I believe the MK4 is going to change the way a lot of us do 3D printing. Trevor said it was one of the easiest set up to print experiences that he has ever had. Literally less than 10 minutes from ripping open the box to printer making its first print. And that says a ton to the quality and commitment that Prusa has behind this. They know they can't have another botch launch, especially with the competition that exists in the industry right now. I firmly appreciate Prusa's commitment to supporting open source and supporting this industry that is made in the Czech Republic, quality, fully vertically integrated so that they control the processes where they can, which means you get the highest quality possible. Yes, it means you pay more money, but Prusa's not running a charity, they're running a business. And they've proven over the last 10 years that while they might have not the greatest track record of doing things right the exact first time, they're certainly looking to change that, but they have their shit together. And I think that matters the most. I really like these machines, but if you're on a budget, I might say go get a mini because at 400 bucks, the mini is a great printer. And if you are willing to roll the dice and not deal with Prusa and not deal with the amazing features that come with Prusa printers, go ahead and grab a Sovel. But you're just not going to get that same experience. I didn't get any gummy bears from my Sovels. Very upset about that. Prusa, you not only get that, but you get a wonderful booklet that will help you learn your machine. I've talked about this before where I believe kits are important for first timers to understand how to not only build a printer, but then be able to disassemble it when necessary to service. It appears that this machine is considerably easier to service than previous Prusas. And previous Prusas were not that difficult to service in comparison to other printers that we have here in the shop. Kudos to Joseph and the entire team over at Prusa Research. I am incredibly excited about these machines, but I do believe it's not going to sell as well as the Mark III platform. When the Mark III came out, that was revolutionary. There was nothing else like it on the market. There was nothing else that was that reliable. Nobody had that level of hype that the MK3 did. Well, five years later, it's a little bit different. But I don't think Prusa is hurting because of it. They look at new markets like small businesses, government, as well as the prosumers that are looking to just quite literally Ron Popeil said it. But I'd love to know, are you guys going to set up your credit card to buy one of these or are you going to forget it and go somewhere else? Let me know in those comments down below and let me know what you think is a fair comparison for this machine. Do you think Bamboo is fair at this point or are we really looking more toward other bed slingers? I am excited for it. I think this doesn't exactly change the game, but I think it starts to turn up the heat in the game. Fast, quiet, Printing is really the big thing for me that will make the MK4 potentially our newest farm machines. I got to get one in hand before I really decide is that quiet fake? or is it real? Boy, howdy, if it's real, I might be buying a bunch of these. Fast printing that is quiet is not something that I currently have here at 3D Musketeers. And it would be amazing for us to be able to think a little bit more clearly when we are printing with a deadline looming. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know again down in those comments what you thought of the MK4, the entire launch, and everything surrounding it. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Check out the links down below. Diamondback! It's finally here. The Prusa MK4, the long-awaited... <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, YouTube channel member, and now PayPal channel member supporters, whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to help out the work that we do here, click those links in that description. Join for as little as $1 a month. Right below me will be the entire look at 
Prusa. Whether it is Prusa Slicer, Prusa Printers, whatever it might be, we've covered a lot of Team Orange. Would love for you guys to take a look at it, learn more a little bit about them. And right next to that, let's go old school, where I race the better three quarters to assemble Prusa Minis. And the race was a lot closer than you might have expected. That's an old video, but it still checks out. My hair was so much shorter back then. I will see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.